Okay. Good. So would you like to just give me a little bit of an introduction? Your email was fairly brief, really, so it didn't give much away. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. So what do you want me to... Um, what do you want me to... Kind of brief background, just, um, I guess, the trail which brought us together. That yeah. Be... Um, I had like a, a spiritual awakening in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when I started to notice that there's something or oh, actually when I was little I had a lot of spiritual experiences mm -hmm. but I I kind of blocked them a lot uh, throughout my life because it was very intense mm. um, and I think from 2010 I started to to experience a lot of um, yeah very intense spiritual things that were <laughs> yeah a bit out of the norm okay uh, and um, in 2012 um, I actually wrote in my diary, diary spiritual awakening but I, I had no clue what it was about or anything oh. yeah so it kind of started from there when I started to be interested in healing and uh, start to um, uh, learn about like different modalities of healing mm. and uh, yeah I knew that something was wrong that I needed to heal or to look at yes uh, because uh, I didn't feel good at all so but yeah and all these years I through YouTube I found different healers and yeah, I went kind of on different paths and then I found out, okay, I don't resonate with this anymore. And then I uh, kind of met new people and then mm -hmm. it was like, okay, now I don't resonate with this. And it continued kind of. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot has happened uh, through the years. Mm -hmm. uh, but then actually, um, I think it was end of November I um, uh, I saw um, Colette Whiteman who yes. yeah that you interviewed she mm -hmm. popped out up on my YouTube feed and I was very drawn to her mm -hmm. so I looked at her video and I was, it kind of was uh, remembering because it happened in 2021 too uh, I had and when I read something by Neville Goddard, mm -hmm. and after that I had this awareness that everyone is God, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't stick. Well, it lasted for a couple of days, but uh, there was a lot of integration happening at that time for me because of a trauma mm -hmm. from my childhood. Mm -hmm. So. I see now, like I, when I look back, I can see that there was a lot of integration happening. Yes. And I wasn't completely aware of it because it was happening from within. Mm -hmm. uh, it was unfolding for me. Yes. Yeah. So, but then uh, November 2023, I saw, um, yeah, Colette Whitman. And uh, it was very interesting because then I felt it in a different way. Um, it's hard to explain, but I, I just remember being in a bubble where there were no thoughts mm -hmm. and it lasted for maybe one or two days. And then I was like, oh my God, what has, what has happened? Uh, it, it, it was gone. And I, I, I saw many of the videos of the people you have interviewed and I realized that there's an integration that's happening. And I also start to get triggers. Um, mm -hmm. And I start to see that, um, yeah, these triggers had to be integrated. Mm -hmm. um, so then I decided to contact you. But I've also worked with, um, like, Amanda and Colette. Oh, good, yeah. Yeah, and then I contacted Julie. Um, Julie Cloutier. Yeah, I contacted her because she's very good with the integration. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, now I'm here. So that sounds really good. 
Yeah, but a lot happened like from 2012 to, to now. A lot of things have happened. Well, I think that was quite a pivotal moment for lots of people, really. In fact, globally, I think it was quite a turning point. Yeah. Uh, so that that's good. Um, so how do you feel you are in terms of realisation now? Do you feel as though there's clarity or do you feel as though there are one or two things which just need a little bit of attention? Um, I feel... It kind, of, it kind. Of, I feel sometimes that I'm uh, very aware, in a way, that I'm not the personality. Mm -hmm. But then I, I see that I kind of fall back into the, to the personality again. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's not uh, that's not a bad thing. That isn't um, anything going wrong. It's just that because we've been conditioned into the personal mode, it's something which tends to just pop up and play out you know in different situations mm -hmm. so that's yeah that's okay um in terms of do you see the distinction between um experience and realization because for most of us we have a there's a kind of sequence where we have a, a series of spiritual experiences yeah and those experiences can become more subtle and they can become more uh, profound and um, so for a while it gives us the idea that with this that self-realization has an experiential component and we're looking to stabilize a particular state but yeah. as I'm sure you know our true nature is actually the awareness within which all experiences arise and so the experiences can come and go yeah so do you feel you're clear um, in the distinction between impersonal awareness and the personal mode of experience? Can you can you consciously switch between those two, would you say? Yes, because um, maybe it's not fully integrated, but I can see the thoughts when they appear. Yes. Um, yeah. And right. I have experiences, but it... Of course, it didn't last, but I, I could see that I was consciousness and everything, like every form was appearing. Yes. Right. Um, but so now, can, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, it's OK. So so do you um, do you feel able to experience as a, an impersonal field of awareness so that um, the thing is, it sounds as though you've had direct experiences of this because there can be the experience of unity consciousness. Yeah. And then there can be a seeing that our true nature is the awareness or beingness within which all experiences arise. And then it becomes possible to actually switch between the personal mode, which we've been conditioned into, and impersonal being or impersonal awareness. And it's actually very simple because it's what is arising already. Um, everything is actually arising in unity already. It's just that we have this secondary mode, the subject object mode, which we've been conditioned to use. Um, but if we just look to see what's arising in this moment, um, can you just see the forms arising? So if we firstly, Let's forget about time. So we'll just look at this moment just as it exists now. And then there are certain forms appearing in this moment. So so there, there are sounds. So there are the two voices. Um, there's awareness of the computer screen, awareness of the light, awareness of the objects in the room, awareness of the body sitting on the seat. There could be awareness of thoughts or awareness of a, the, a quiet mind or awareness of emotion or sensation mm -hmm. and all those forms are arising equally and effortlessly within this open space of awareness which you've always remained as and so do you feel you can just experience in that way I can, like, if I, <laughs> I wanted to say I put my mind to it, but not put my mind to it. But... Yes. <laughs> yes, because it's, 
it's actually effortless in, in yeah. that in that um when we when there's no effort involved yeah there is just the noticing of whatever the particular forms are arising in any moment so i do moment, sometimes in the more like i can sit and just be aware of the yeah. right yeah so could you just mention a few to me just mention a few forms arising in this moment so there could be say there's awareness of the clothing there's awareness of the hair on the shoulders there's awareness of the sound of the two voices um just anything that's arising you know there could be sounds or anything that can yeah. be seen or any sensation or if there are thoughts or emotions if you could just mention a few of them arising just right in this very moment anything that's arising after this awareness of the the fridge making sounds mm -hmm. yeah good there's awareness of um a contraction in the body okay yeah um, mm -hmm. there's a way sure you use the language it's good yeah mm, there's awareness of people above my apartment making okay. sounds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's good so you can just see so you're really clear on the distinction then between forms arising effortlessly in this open space of awareness because the forms are constantly changing but what is unchanging is the awareness and beingness which is aware of them yeah. and it's that open space within which all those forms appear so that's really good so and you can see that that's effortless too because mm -hmm. the effortlessness is not venturing out of presence into speculation about the past or future and, and not engaging the mind so it's just whatever the forms are arising you know just very simply in this moment yeah that's great that's really clear that's fantastic well that actually is self-realization because it is the simple seeing of the forms arising impersonally because all the conditioning we've had is that we we're existing as a human being in time and space and we have the personal story, the family, the life situation. And we have that mode of experience, which be continues to be available to us. Mm. But it's seeing that that is a mode which is available rather than what you truly are. Yeah. And when that distinction between the mode of being, you know, existing as a human being in time and space with the story, that, that that's seen to be an option but actually what is always present is this open space of awareness within which forms arise equally and effortlessly. Fantastic. So the integration really is an integration of the ability to function from, from one's impersonal, infinite nature yeah and for that to integrate into the human experience because it sounds as though you're doing that very proficiently already because you mentioned there are certain triggers or invitations yeah so so are they are they um themes which have continued for a while uh, does some go back to your childhood or does some yeah. go back a while i've uh just in this period of december uh, i feel that a lot of, has been integrated right um, because i see how it's uh the the world is kind of uh projecting it back to me yes yeah so i can see that yeah i'm not as there's a lot of fear that's been released but there, is, there are still things from childhood, yeah, mm. that's uh, being integrated. Mm. So, yeah. but I can see, um, I can feel it like physically, mm -hmm. um, and then I can sit with it, and I can ask the, uh, ask, what is, what thought form or what belief system, um is this uh, like symbolically showing me yes like, what is it? and then i after i sit with it and being in awareness of it it can kind of transform in a way mm -hmm. and i can ask like how 
um, when did this arise? Like when, what was the origin? Mm. And I get pictures of childhood. Wow, that's interesting. My childhood, and I can see, yeah. And it's it's actually the the technique uh, Julie Cloutier showed me. Yes. Yeah, how to integrate. Good. So, yeah, so I, I get the, but I can be in awareness while the emotions or, mm. or the story come up. And then yes. because I can be in that, be the awareness yes. of different forms. Great. Yeah. So do you see, I, I tend to kind of show that there's a distinction between the intelligence which is coming from our infinite nature and then there's an intelligence which is functioning in the dualistic realm. Yeah. So are you, are you familiar with the koshas? I've actually, I didn't know, know about them, but I heard them through your channel. Good. Yeah. So <clears throat> really it's seeing that we all remain as attributeless beings. So attributeless being is just awareness aware of itself. Or the Indian version is Rishi, Devita and Chandas. So Rishi is the knower. Devita is the means of knowing. And Chandas is the known. So in the simplest form of awareness, it's just awareness aware of itself because awareness is the Rishi awareness is the devita and awareness is chandas and um, actually any experience we have is always just rishi devita and chandas it's always the knower the means of knowing and the known it, <clears throat> so it's either in the direct version which is where it is just awareness aware of itself or in a disguised version so in a disguised version, you know, where there are forms appearing, then the the forms are a kind of disguised version. So if we take um, awareness of, well, a, a simple example I use is just awareness of, say, having a cup of tea. So, so Nivet um, is disguised as the knower and um, the sense of taste is the means of knowing and then the tea is the known so it's a kind of disguised relative version but it is still actually everything in reality is always just awareness aware of itself mm -hmm. and so seeing that we can <clears throat> we can see we never leave home really it's just that we have these options for kind of playing in this disguised realm and um, in terms of the koshas it's quite good to see the sequence because there's a sequence of unfoldment um, from subtle to gross so we remain as attributeless being but then the first the first kosha is the body of bliss which is actually an infinite field of bliss and it's impersonal and um, so the the knower is awareness the means of knowing is awareness but what is known is infinite bliss rather than just awareness so that's the first option and then the second one which is the the body of wisdom is where all forms can arise equally and effortlessly so that's the one to become familiar with and to function from consciously as much as possible even in daily experience because when we when we function from effortless being, which is the body of wisdom, then we're remaining in neutrality and we're remaining in our impersonal nature. And that's really where we can remain free of suffering because when we're just functioning and remaining as a, an infinite field of impersonal awareness, then the forms come and go, but we have no investment in them looking in any particular way. So the way we just looked at things a moment ago, it was just seeing that those forms arise and they're, they're just arising, you know, they're slightly different. The forms arising in this moment are slightly different to the ones when we were looking previously, but they, they're just, just arising equally and effortlessly. 
And knowing that that is um, an option in any moment, you know, any time of the day and night, we can actually just remain as impersonal being, impersonal awareness and notice the forms appearing. And um, the, the benefit of that is that the body of bliss and the body of wisdom remain in alignment with the infinite being, which we could call God. Whereas the the dualistic realms, which are the mental, emotional and physical, or the the astral, etheric and physical, um, they're part of an energetic construct. And it's in that construct that there are the implications. So there's personalization, which appears in the dualistic realm, which arises in the mind, first of all. And then the, um, you know, you could say the reincarnation cycle exists within the dualistic realm. It's a sort of cycling between the physical, etheric, astral, and then back to the physical. But the benefit of realization, the benefit of realizing that actually you've remained as this infinite impersonal field of awareness, then we're off that ride then, because it's only when we're identifying with individuality that we feel that, you know, we're subject to those um, experiences. So we can withdraw the investment in that personal realm. And so the in, the integration is the integration of establishing the ability to function from impersonal awareness and um, and then to utilize the dualistic realm in a conscious way. So, for instance, the um, the mind can be used. Well, the mind can be used in three ways, really. That There are three main ways, three main options for humans. So the first one is um, where it's aligned with infinite being. Uh, and that, so that is where um, things like intuition or synchronicity or inspiration or cre creativity, um, all of those um, things, you know, come from um, the infinite being and they're coming through the body of wisdom um so so creativity is something which we you know we can utilize um and many people I have conversations with what's your kind of background in terms of your um your working life and your education um i uh, i studied um um like bioengineering here in norway because I oh yes, and Great. I did a master's degree in molecular biology. Fantastic. I, <laughs> I yeah, I worked a lot of years, but I actually quit my job uh, because I felt that it is, didn't resonate with me anymore. I felt very guided to quit too. Yes. So right now, I'm not working. I'm just. Um, I'm just being. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, trying to. I'm not really trying to figure anything out because I feel guided to not do anything. Yes. Um, like in September when I, I quit, I felt guided to go more within. Yes. So yeah. Well, you're really lucky to have the space to be able to do that, and yeah. Um, you also. Uh, it's it's great that you know you've you've been drawn to self realization even though you know you've had a an academic career and you know the education has been very much to do with the mind really yeah because lots of people when they venture in that direction um, the programming can become quite um, rigid so you know, it's more, it, it can be more difficult. But I think for you, because the the spiritual aspect of your existence has been there all along, mm -hmm. then you were never, even though you you can function really competently in, you know, in the, ac the academic realm, um, you were never totally identified with it probably. And I, th you know, the fact that you've been able to just drop it in the way you have is a good <laughs> Yeah, it shows I, that. it's very interesting because I I love reading about it, but the environment and the people, uh, it was very intense for me. Yes. And I've always been more 
artistic, I think. Yes. Uh, but it was, I think it's also a cultural thing that you need to have an education. Uh, yes. So I think, yeah, that's one of the reasons that I went that part. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Are you able to continue um, for a while without being too concerned about, um, you know, financial matters? Yeah, I uh, I actually, <laughs> I think it was uh, in 2021 um, because of the trauma that I experienced as a child. Uh, mm -hmm. I found out in like right before COVID came out. So uh, it came out of the blue. So I had to quit my job then and completely, I didn't know how to go from like the first few months it was okay, but for a year, I didn't know how to pay my bills, actually. Mm -hmm. So it was an intense process. Of, yes. Yeah, I think there was like an integration of lack uh, happening. Right. Yes. Um, but right now, I'm kind of in the same position, but I, I have the the means right now. But right. I'm, the fear isn't there, even though, yeah, I can have some tickets arising. Sure. <laughs> yes. Well, that's really good because, I mean, that's very progressive in in one way, which is wonderful. But also, the, the you've recognized the most important factor, which is to maintain emotional neutrality. Because to be able to continue a life in terms of integrating spirituality into the human experience, um, not entertaining fear and limitation you know is a very important aspect of that because you're you're consciously creating a predominant frequency of life experience which is it's really to do with self-respect which is the opposite to the way we've been created we've been conditioned um so giving yourself time in the way you have and just making it so that fear isn't ever an option yeah. um uh, but then you know, life can change a little bit, but the, the priority really is to just maintain a sense of well-being, ease and comfort yeah. um, rather than straining. Because most people, the conditioning is that they're working really hard. They might be working 50, 60 hours a week mm -hmm. when actually they could survive by working 20. Yeah. And and so the the priority is always to have that sense of ease and effortlessness in daily experience because it actually perpetuates, you know, in my own experience and those of lots of people I've spoken with, um, just maintaining that sense of ease, joy, you know, for life to just be, to you know, to have it, you know, to, it, there's a sort of magical quality which is available if we just allow that to come through and having the spaces you do to be able to do that, you yeah. know, just really experiencing every day in the most joyful and light and you know uplifting way yeah. is really the way to you know stabilize that frequency and then from there it tends to be in an upward direction and for you i would say that you know there is a very powerful dharma which is um which is it you know it'll become much more apparent to you you know, I think that the um, the way your life will go, because it's there's a kind of perfection to the way the timing is, because you have this space available right now where there can be integration, there can be, um, you know, just kind of settling into um, functioning from one's infinite nature and then allowing things to come to you. Yeah. So, yeah, that sounds... That's what I felt too that yeah. you don't need to go out and search for things no. i have done that many years of my life and it never worked right <laughs> yeah yeah it's, well, like, it's yeah so nice it. you you have the well to to have even found yourself in this situation shows that that you've been functioning from um that level of authenticity you know without fear and um yeah, well, I think there has been a lot of fear, but I had to, like, when I was integrating the, the the lack, mm. even there might be some still, but 
uh, it was so intense for me, but mm -hmm. the reason I went through it uh, helped me to be where I'm now, I feel. Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. You're in a great space, actually. It just sounds perfect. It sounds as though, um, you know, maybe there are one or two um, little triggers or invitations, yeah. but you know how to handle them. You know, you because you know, you, you can see that they are only little rides, which you can either, you know, you can go on that little ride or you can just walk past. You don't need to get on it, do you? <laughs> I feel like the invitations if i take them now they are more intense because it's like the yes so out of alignment yeah that's well that's a really good sign because that's yeah. actually your intuition because mm -hmm. the as you say the contrast um is even more apparent because if you're functioning mainly from effortless being and there's this sense of neutrality stability silence peace uh, an open space to allow things to come in and just be attentive to the things just coming to you effortlessly mm -hmm. then any of those old patterns you know where there's any kind of discord or emotional disturbance it's very unattractive and and yeah. they they tend to be really noticeable because as you say the contrast is so great so you don't um, tend to entertain them for too, too much really yeah. That's that's amazing though. It's um, yeah. It's in a way it's been it's been unfolding really from birth for you. I feel you know it's something which has been ongoing. It's always been there. In fact, you never you never fully identified with the human experience. It's yeah. uh, and in a way, the experiences you had in childhood is very common. You've probably heard me say this. You know that lots of people I speak with have had traumatic experiences in childhood mm -hmm. and the reason for that is because the the invitation into identification with the personal realm um, is something which there are two sides to it really the one is that it's kind of challenging us so that we we're even more determined in one way to get through it um, the other one is that it's it's kind of inviting us into personalization, but the personalization doesn't prevail for too long. You know, there could, we can have experiences of it before we fully understand, you know, how this experience can be conducted. But for you, it's, um, you know, it, it's wonderful that you've got through and there's such clarity because there isn't, there isn't anything missing for you. There is already realization that's already totally clear, you know, and, and it doesn't matter. There can be invitations which come along. There can be old tendencies. They don't make any difference because they just seem to be arising within this independent field of awareness, which you've always remained as. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're just invitations back into personalization. Yeah. But the thing that's wonderful for you is that the, the ability to actually withdraw um, the investment in the personal realm is something which you've already achieved because for many people that's one of the biggest things because the conditioning because it is possible to live life based on effort and fear and hard work and strain and those things but um, to actually make the transition into functioning from your infinite nature and to allow things to arise effortlessly and, and to create this space um, which is actually impersonal being that you know that is just always there but to consciously invite that into one's daily experience is something which you know it sometimes takes a little while especially if people have responsibilities but it sounds as though you're you're able to you've been able to just fine-tune your life so that the priority is there in terms of spiritual integration and also um it's the adventure of seeing what your real purpose in life what your dharma is yeah and it's uh, you know my feeling it's to do with sharing this knowledge with others because mm -hmm. you have the you have the blessing really of the spiritual depth but also a very clear and powerful mind which is you know the best combination really yeah it's um 
Yeah, I've. Uh, I don't know actually what's going to be, but I'm I'm no. just open to it. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's exactly the way to be because um, any speculation um, can slow the process in a way you know just the because you're just effortlessly open uh, to whatever will come your way and there's the stability to be able to experience that and really the only the only responsibility is for every day to be as joyful effortless um expansive um as possible yeah. and and then just see what comes into the space I feel that's where I'm at, where I'm integrating the things that needs to be seen. Or yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I feel more at ease now that I know it, how I can integrate it yes. more easily. Yes. So. And it's so nice you've been speaking with, you know, Colette and Amanda and Julie because... Um, it's quite a nice community that's forming there and it's like a support network which is it's amazing the way it's happened because um it's something which i don't really have time for but they you know and they they have just the right energy and just the right qualities to be able to do that so it's um it's really nice that that's emerged because it is um lots of people say that you know following realization being able to spend time you know, speaking with others and, uh, you know, maybe in a group can be very helpful. And it's yeah. it's so nice that that's happening. Yeah, I, for me, it's important because I need, I for me, this is like number one in my life right now. Mm. And yeah, yeah of, of course, I have a, a father who I'm helping taking care of. But yes. like, uh, I don't know, after I quit my job, I just felt so guided Mm. Uh, and I feel more and more peaceful um, as I, yeah, I go this path. Mm. So, and I, yeah, I, it's great fortune, really, the way it's emerged for you. Yeah, I feel very, I'm very grateful. So, it's been an intense ride <laughs> to be here. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And, um, in many ways, though, the intensity is something which has been very powerful in terms of integration because yeah. the the experiences you've had probably um, they've enabled you to see them in context where you, you know, because we can see the intensity of experiences in the personal realm, mm. um, in the context of impersonal being, and they have a different quality then. Yeah. Whereas if all the in investment is in the personal realm, then the intensity and the personalization just can be much more intense. But, you know, most people don't realize it's only ever our own energy, which is fueling all of that because yeah. personalization is like a ride, really. It's like, um, you know, it's like a one man show. Yeah. <laughs> um, in, in a way, it, it feels like, to just be where I'm now, it has been worth it. Yes. So when I was in it, I would probably not say that, but no, no. <laughs> but just yeah, I'm I'm so grateful because I see like friends and family how how they are struggling with different mm. things, and it's not always easy um, because you've been through the pain, you see it very clearly. Yes. Yeah. It's it can be challenging, can't it? Because we want to we want to help everyone really yeah. you know including family friends everyone close to us mm -hmm. um and it seems as though there's an opportunity to help them but sometimes there isn't because they're they're yeah. not receptive so again that is you know that's that, that's another form of invitation in a way and it's yeah. quite easy you know with practice or just with you know just you know sort of life experience you can see how it's possible to just allow things to be without um feeling because the programming we have is quite often to do with things like guilt yeah so so we you know we have this feeling that we we really should help our mom or our dad or our brother or sister or friend mm -hmm. um but they're not receptive yeah um, 
And if they're not, then um, it's really important not to carry any residue of guilt about that because there's, you, you know in your heart that you're always available for them. And as soon as there is an opening, then you would be there to help them. Yeah. But in the meantime, then there are ways you can support them in different ways, aren't there? You know, you can support them on the human level. I think um, I it took some time for me to realize that. Um, and I think I still am working with the guilt part um, to fully integrate that. Mm. Um, but I see that even if I try to help, it, it sometimes feels like it just gets worse. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well, it's good. you, But you can drop the guilt instantly. There isn't any reason to continue that at all because it is only yeah. it's just part of the theme park really it's a, it's a little you know it's a little sideshow that we don't need to go on yeah and it's really that transition i it's this in a way it's the same as integrating things like um bereavement or you know dealing with situations which emerge in life because we can we can be fully committed to the welfare of a person or an animal or a situation. And um, that commitment is totally wholehearted. But then there needs to be a point sometimes where we just totally relinquish that level of um, attention because, you know, if circumstances change, then there's nothing you can do. And there's no purpose in continuing to invest emotional or mental energy in a situation which has already passed. Yeah. And it's the same really with invitations into guilt because there is no there is no benefit in investing in guilt ever. Mm -hmm. And um so the and there's an incentive in not doing it because the the energy which previously was fueling the experience of guilt can be withdrawn and it becomes available in terms of your infinite potential. So it's um, it's really good to know that because any any residue of emotional investment in any of those sort of lower frequency emotions, um, you can just withdraw that energy instantaneously and it just becomes available in terms of your higher purpose, really. Okay, yeah. That's great, but yeah, amazing that um, things have developed. It seems as though there's like a really strong and powerful foundation in your life, like a really strong spiritual foundation, which has always been there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's um, it's found its way to the surface of the human experience now as well. So yeah. that's, um, you know, that's great. But you don't seem to have any questions either. <laughs> um... Yeah, I wasn't fully sure if I had self-realized or even though I had the experiences, there's a part of me that it's just a ticket saying it's imposter syndrome or something. Yes. So, yeah. Well, understanding the way the mind works, because, you know, I, I started to say about the three aspects of the mind. So the one is, which is totally um, aligned with our infinite nature, uh, and that's the one really to, um, you know, allow to develop more. Um, the second one is a sort of practical aspect of the mind, which is to do with utilizing it, you know, in a sort of, uh, sort of, you know, practical way. The third aspect is to do with the invitations and, and understanding how that works, because the mind, the mind is like, a, it's like a transmitter and a receiver. So the the we're playing in this, it's like an energetic matrix. It's like a computer game almost, the dualistic realm. And the the invitations, they're personalized and they're tailor-made. So depending on depending on the areas where there's maximum progress. So for you, because self-realization has really come to the fore and the clarity is there, then the invitations are likely to be trying to um, contest that in some way to, or, to, or to challenge you or to challenge, you know, your feeling of 
um, the stability of realization. And and when you see that, it's it's quite good to see how predictable those invitations are, really, because the the clarity is already there. Um, and, you know, I've said before that the only difference between someone who accepts realization and knows that there is already full realization and someone who questions it is really that the one who is questioning it is still entertaining the delivery system into the mind. Yeah. So the thoughts being delivered, the doubts and the thoughts, um, it's just it's just that there's an option to either disregard them. Um, you know, we can review them and say, well, I can see why this one's coming in because it's trying to undermine, um, you know, my um, ever present knowing. Um, and, um, uh, you know, or, or we can just rest in this, you know, in, in the impersonal infinite awareness. Mm -hmm. And and so it's it's really a simple it's a simple choice and the you, you've actually noticed um in the way the invitations are delivered that the there's obviously a real clarity in the way they're being experienced because you notice them instantaneously so if there's anything which is coming from the dualistic source to invite you into a sense of limitation or doubt or guilt there's a an emotional component to that which is it's kind of alerting you to the fact that it's coming from the dualistic source and it's saying well hang on a minute you don't really need to entertain this mm. and it's becoming more they're becoming more noticeable because when effortless being is predominating then it's really easy to spot them as they're being delivered yeah that's okay. fantastic <laughs> I was trying to think of it, of some questions, but I. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's really good that um, that you don't have any because that that also um, shows that there is alignment um, in terms of functioning from your infinite nature because. When there is, when there's the stability of functioning from one's infinite nature, then the questions really don't arise so much because there's a knowing on some level that whatever you need to know will come to you. Yeah. And probably some of the experiences you had in the earlier part of your life, you know, gave you um, that knowing anyway. Yeah. But it's, it's, um, the, and that's part of the integration process, really, just really trusting your own inner knowing over and above anything you hear from anyone. Because in terms of your your own dharma, um, the, the delivery system coming from the infant being to direct you is totally unique to you. So... Um, there isn't anyone else who has the same um, refinement or clarity in terms of the direction uh, to go yeah. than your own inner knowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel that more and more now. It took a while for me to, yeah. because I've been through yeah, so many um, teachers, and, but mm. there was always something leading me back to myself in a way. Yes. Oh, but the well, the way you just yeah. the way you described it at the start of the conversation demonstrates that because you you know whatever was beneficial um, in any particular teaching you were able to utilize, but yeah. as soon as that was exhausted, then on you went. Yeah. That's the self revealing itself to itself, really. And I I start to see that like it's very interesting, but. It's like even on YouTube, like the the past isn't there anymore. Like the people who used to come on. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Now it's now there's a lot about non-duality and like mm. I see that it's from every year it's like shifted. Yes. Yeah. And people. So mm. and the teachings. That's great. Yeah. 
So it's it's shifting with the with the consciousness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're in a great space actually. It's um, really inspiring to see. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to hear it from the outside too, <laughs> to just know that yeah you're on the right path. Yeah, well, I speak to lots of people, so, yeah. uh, you know, across the board, um, there, you know, it can be quite variable. But um, what's consistent is the clarity is growing much more for everyone. Yeah. But that, you know, that's become more apparent. Yeah, the thing I really realized when I watched you and Colette and and all the others and Amanda and Julie and everyone actually on your page is that it's it's so available to everyone or yes. it's um because the teachers I saw before it was very it felt a bit heavy like mm. the, the, I always thought there has to be a simpler way like why would it be so difficult to yes to get to know God yes yeah so when we are that already yeah so why are there all these rules and regulations and mm. it felt too much for me yes and even if i tried them it didn't work so it just felt more limiting in a way yeah yeah well your intuition has just been so so clear really and so reliable yeah because it, it hasn't allowed you to venture into any cul-de-sacs really or even if you did you didn't stay there very long <laughs> yeah i had I had i think in 2020 was very but i think it was from something past um, past life i felt yeah that needed to be integrated because i wasn't really interested in but i just felt myself moving into it yes and i had to take like um i had to take I had to take a decision. Do I want to follow this or do I yes. want to? But then I actually had an experience uh, where I felt I was pulled out of the body or out of the personality. Mm -hmm. And I just was consciousness. And I heard myself saying, or I heard there is no good versus evil. It's your own consciousness. Yes. And then, yeah, I think that helped me. It was like a grace. Yes. To yeah, be to come back to the truth in a way. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's here, you know, with um with the intensity of certain religions and teachings, it seems as though good and evil are real. When, yeah. When actually, they're more like components in a movie, and what we're experiencing is more like a movie. Yeah. And so you can see those polarities existing. You know, you see them existing in the world, but it's not seeing them with that level of intensity because it's the it's seeing it all as Maya really. Yeah. I I didn't understand it at the time because mm. it felt so real. Mm. But I, I realized um later that it's um but I had to go through it in a way to see it. Yes. And I realized it's more symbolic of things I needed to integrate within. Yes. But it felt very scary. Mm. <laughs> A lot of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well that's um yeah, that's amazing though, the way it's so clear. It's it's so nice to have a a conversation which is just really easy and effortless because sometimes it's a bit of a battle because the you know, if the mind is still strong, then it can be a, it, it can be like doing sixteen rounds, you know, <laughs> boxing with someone. <laughs> But uh, it's been really easy with you. That's been so nice. Yeah, I think it's the timing too, because I know I've been a lot in my mind too. Um, so I, I feel mm. it's the timing. And well, just... the integration of the mind yeah. as well for, is something for you, which is a value because you do have a great mind. And so that's something um, which is still available. Um, yeah. But the mind is much more it's much more vital and much more useful when the foundation is effortless being. Yeah. And the, 
you know the fun the fun part of it really is that we don't need to speculate or and we don't need to know because the sequence the sequence that unfolds and the things we require along the way they're just presented to us effortlessly so we don't need to be agonizing over anything because we know it'll turn up as it does and yeah. you see that even with um even with the sequence if you review say the teachers that you've you know been interested in along the way you see that it's um it's always the self revealing itself to itself so the because the because the infinite self is already fully realized for everyone in reality mm -hmm. all we can do is pretend that it isn't so mm -hmm. so the the infinite self doesn't reveal itself in a sort of random way it does it in a very precise way really so you can see that the sequence of the teachers the knowledge um you know the teachings the integration is something which is it couldn't have been in any other way really yeah i i realized that I, that's what i needed then and there yes it's not the absolute truth it yes. was yeah that's what i needed to yes. be where i'm now yeah um, it's very interesting. <laughs> it is. Well, it's it gives a lot of kind of trust in the whole process because you see, you see that that can only that can only happen if there's this guiding infinite intelligence. Because if if infinite intelligence wasn't guiding it, yeah. then it wouldn't happen like that. So for everyone, mm -hmm. it's possible to see that that intelligence is actually guiding things all the time. Yeah, because I. The, the personality felt very lost, but there was always something, yeah, attracting me to different people. And mm. and after a while, I saw the pattern. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs>